All right, so here we have a piecewise function. And with it, we're going to evaluate a few limits and also f of 2 and f of 4. So to get started, I will just graph this piecewise function so that you know many students are very visual, so it's nice, nice for them to, to see it. Um, but that being said, we can figure these things out algebraically as well. So this piecewise function, and I'll talk about that later, by the way. So this piecewise function is broken into three parts. Right? The first one, when x is smaller than 2. So that's 2 for x here. So the first portion will be this area. The second one will be between 2 and 4, including 2, but not including 4. So be in this area here. And then the last one, represented by this expression, will be when x is greater than or equal to 4. So over there. Okay, so starting with this one, x squared minus 1 when x is smaller than 2. What, what does this look like? That's just a parabola, right? If you don't know what it looks like, you can use a table of values to plug in a few points and figure them out. Um, but I will assume that you're comfortable with parabolas and this parabola will have a vertex at 0, comma, negative 1. So y intercept at negative 1 here. And we're going to go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 2, up 4. But note that we, we have x is smaller than 2, so we can't include the 2. So I'll make an open dot here. Look at that. And then we would have gone over 3, up 9 in both directions. So that would be over here, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And now I'll just try to draw a smooth line, which... It's usually challenging for me using this particular uh, pen and software, but uh, not too bad, right? Acceptable, hopefully. There we go. Okay, so that's the first portion here. Now the second, when x is between 2 and 4, including the 2 but not the 4, 5. Why is it just 5? What does that mean? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's a straight line starting here at 2, when x equals 2, right? And going all the way over to 4, but not including the 4. So it's just this strange little line here, like including the 2, so I make a, a solid dot, and I, I make an open dot at x equals 4, okay? Now, third portion. When x is greater than or equal to 4, we have negative x plus 9. What does that look like? Well... That is just a straight line with y-intercept of 9, but we won't see that. It won't be part of um, our equation, right? The 9, because, well, it's just when x is greater than 4 or equal to 4. And with the slope of negative 1 right here, there's a hidden 1 there. So, um, let's say that I want to make... You, could, you can plug in values to see what's going to happen. If I plug in a 4 here, I get negative 4 plus 9, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at that. Right there. Now what if I plug in a 5 here? Well, negative 5 plus 9 is 4. That's the 4. So it's just going to be a straight line going down this way. If you want to confirm that, you can plug in other points, other x values confirm the y value so that's our strange piecewise function in this case and with that we can evaluate all these fantastic things we're, that we're looking for so what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left that's what the little minus there means so that's 2 as we approach it from the left we're gonna get closer and closer to y equals 3 so approaching x is approaching 2 from the left. If we approach 2 from the right with the, the x value, so x, sorry, the x approaches 2 from the right, we're going to be coming from this way, right? From here, because, you know, if x is 3, then 2.5, then 2.1, so we're approaching 5, actually. 
And how could we find these algebraically? Well, for the for one here, we would need to actually plug in two into here. Two squared, four minus one, three. Because x is smaller than two, if it's coming from the left. And for this one, we would have plugged, uh, well, there's actually no x, we're just gonna take the five, because that's the function when x is smaller than, or sorry, greater than or equal to two, and of course, smaller than four as well. Okay, so then what is the limit as x approaches two of f of x? It won't exist. Why does it not exist? Well, because the limit from the left and the right must be the same. They're not the same in this case. So the limit as x approaches 2 doesn't exist. As x approaches the 2, there's no limit. So, moving on. What about the limit as x approaches 4 from the left? So in this case, we're looking, here's our 4. So as we approach 4 from the left, we're coming over here, and the value would be just 5. Simple, right? So we just, and to do it algebraically, we would just, again, use the 5 right away. Because coming from the left, we would be taking this, right? X is smaller than 4, so it must be this one. Now, limit as X approaches 4 from the right, we would need to take this expression. Why? Because X is greater than, than or equal to 4 there. So we're coming from this way. So it will also be 5. Now because these guys are the same, the limit as x approaches 4 is actually 5. Must be the same. It does exist, first of all, right? Because they, they must be the same for this to even exist. And it does because they are the same, so it's just 5. And then we're looking for f of 2. What is f of 2? If I plug in a 2 here, I get just 5. That's the closed dot, right? That's what it means. We go through the 3. We don't, we don't care about this guy because it's an open dot. And we just have 5. And what about f of 4? Well, 5 also, right there. So for this, we would plug in the 4 right here. Negative 4 plus 5. Sorry, negative 4 plus 9. Five. That's it. Hopefully this made good sense to everyone. Kind of a long video. Longer than I'm used to. But um, yeah, I would suggest try some, uh, some other questions and good luck.